What's up everyone, welcome back to Just Finish Coding. This is part 3 of our Connect 4 series on Scratch 3, so let's get coding. Just finished coding. Now quick interjection here, if you've not watched part 1 and 2 of the series, please watch them before you come here because we're picking up from where we left off and you'll be very lost. I'll leave a card for you right here. Please watch the videos and then come right back. If you're still here, I'm going to assume that you've watched parts 1 and 2, in which case, let's move on with our controller's step 2 function. So the first thing I'll do is to set the second counter which we have, which is D, to be 1. And I could use C, but I, th I just think we have already another counter stored up in memory and we can just use that and besides in you know like the further steps we might need that c variable but uh, just know that we could use c if we want and uh, in case you do want to actually go ahead and do it all right so uh, set d to be one and right after this i'm going to repeat the length of and you can do that by grabbing this repeat 10 times once again and uh, within variables grab this block which says length of board and you want to change that to be length of possible column values so now what we're going to do is to run through this possible column values list and find out which is the bottom most coordinate. And the reason I set up the largest uh, uh, number to be zero is because even if like the top coordinate, okay, or uh, this would be uh, the first coordinate. So even if that was actually vacant, we'd still make it as a move. So if I set it to one, for example, it would just jeopardize the entire thing and we would not make a move even though this like top coordinate is um, vacant. So um, we'll repeat length of possible column values and now we are going to have an if then and um, this thing is going to be much simpler than our uh, above step one, okay? So now after this if, I'm just gonna change D by one so that I don't forget to do so later on. So I'll have a change D by one right there. And uh, within this if, here's what I'm gonna have. So if I'm gonna grab an equals to, actually grab a less than, okay? Or greater than, whatever you call this. So the, on the right side of this, we're gonna have largest number. And uh, on the left side of this, we're gonna have if letter one of, and you can find that within operators. So letter one of item D of possible column values. So item D of possible column values. That is going to be uh, the particular, you know, um, a particular element that we are at when we're like surfing through or going through this list. So we're gonna have um, of item one of board and you can change that item one uh, to be a possible column, not item one, you can change that uh, list to be possible column values and uh, within that item number, just put in the variable D. All right, so uh, this item is going to be seeing if this letter one of this particular item is going to be larger than the largest number. So if it is, well, it, that is going to ensure that, uh, you know, we can actually make the move in that particular spot. Well, in that case, what we can do is to actually just, you know, set the largest number to be that particular number or, or rather the letter one of that particular element. So I'm just gonna have set largest number to be, uh, where's that? Yeah, set largest number to be this. I'm just gonna duplicate it and put it right there. Item D, oh, actually wait, not item D. We're gonna have letter one of uh, item D of possible column values, okay? And uh, this is going to ensure that the uh, largest number constantly keeps on increasing and we actually have the, um, you know, largest number to be basically the correct number that we want to have. Um, what I really mean is that we need the coin to move right at the bottom and to ensure that we need the largest number to be constantly incrementing in case we actually find a vacant square. So now I'm actually going to set up a new variable and that's going to be called current move. Okay, and what current move is going to be holding is what is the move that we can make as of now, which is an empty square. So I'm going to set current move and uh, set current move to be, uh, it's a bit complicated now. So just, um, I'll just code in this. Okay, so set this to be item and uh, item and I'm going to change that to be a board, but that's already board. So that's good. And now I'm gonna say item number of, uh, and this is going to be, uh, uh, where are we? Oh yeah, change this board to be board coordinates and this to be board coordinates as well. And uh, we'll be putting that entire thing of possible column values thing, uh, item D to be right here. And this is going to be our current move. 
So the current move is actually going to be the coordinate within board coordinates, uh, which is the correct move. So this is going to be, for example, in our case, this is going to be, um, uh, I believe six comma four, that's going to be our, our correct move. Okay, it's fine if you don't understand this, this is just going to ensure that your uh, correct move is that particular uh, move with, where as of now, as of now in our tree of analysis, if you want to put it that way, we have that as our uh, move, which we will make if we were to terminate this process right away. So what this is going to do when we actually finish looping through this uh, possible column values list is to make sure that the bottom most coordinate is the one which is going to be set as the current, uh, current move. And now we can actually move on to step three of our, um, of our move function, which is probably the easiest step of all. All right, now I'm gonna scroll up and bring that define step three all the way down. Uh, and uh, here's what I'm gonna do within step three, okay? So uh, the first thing I'll do is to have an if else condition. And uh, here's where the largest um, number um, uh, variable is going to help us a lot. So I'm gonna say if the largest number is equals to zero, well, in this case, it means that it didn't find any possible uh, move where you know the coin can actually be put into because if it did then it's the largest number is going to be that particular you know current move which we had so if the largest number is equals to zero that implies that the player tried to make an illegal move so what we can do is to set movement back to yes so set um, movement back to yes where's that yeah set movement back to yes and uh, we are also going to be broadcasting a message which is called illegal move. So um, broadcast illegal move. Uh, so new message and illegal move. And we'll get into what illegal move does later. We'll just probably have like a message printed out on top or something, but just have that in place. Now, if this is not the case, then it means that the player legitimately had a legal move that he could make in that particular column. So in that case, what we will do is to say replace item off first and you can find that in your variables category within your list and uh, you want to change this um, uh, thing to be turn okay and what we're going to do is to replace that particular item of board with the turn of the player so if player uh, one made that turn it's going to be p and if player two made the turn it's going to be q so uh, replace not item one but we'll replace item number of um and we'll just say item number of current move, okay? So you can find current move once again in the variables. So uh, item number of current move in not board, but board coordinates because current move only exists in the board coordinates list and not in the board, uh, in the board list. So if this is the case, we'll just um, replace that item um, with the correct player values and that is going to be occupied. So um, this list is going to detect that the value is not V anymore and it's going to actually skip that uh, skip that uh, particular element in the list. And right after this, I'm gonna set up Encore. And if you remember Encore, we actually used that uh, right here when we had this move player list, uh, move player message being broadcasted. So I'm gonna set Encore and where's that? Yeah, set Encore to be, and I'm gonna set it to be letter one of current move. And you could also say that's largest number, but I'm just gonna be setting it to letter one of current move and uh, set it to be letter one of current move. And uh, that's pretty much all Encore is. And that will take you to the correct column number. And after this, we're not going to be broadcasting uh, this message which we had right here, which is move player. What we'll do instead is to broadcast another message, which is going to be called try uh, move, uh, not try move, I'm sorry. Uh, what did we broadcast here? Uh, just a sec. So we broadcasted um, move player right here and yeah, actually we will broadcast move player here as well. So um, broadcast uh, move player. So uh, there we are, broadcast move player. There we are. So what I'm gonna do now is to actually head over to the move player um, message received in the um, red button and I'm actually gonna make some changes. So uh, initially what I thought was I'd have like this list, um, like uh, you check winning uh, list, uh, check winning function actually execute before we move the player. But then I actually realized that, you know, the, uh, to know that the player won, uh, the move has to be made first. So we'll have the move player function execute first. And right after this, okay, 
what I'm going to do is to stamp okay and stamp like I said is just leaving an imprint in that particular square where we are at and once we're done with this I'm going to broadcast um, change move okay and within the chain or when we actually receive change move in the controller at that particular time we will be um, actually you know um, checking if the player has won or not so as of now just have a new message set up called um, oops not can change move and uh, once you actually hit OK, you can just broadcast that, put it right there. And now you can head back to the controller sprite and make some changes or rather just add in some code when we actually do receive change move. So grab a when I receive change move from the events category and here's what you need to do. So first we'll have an if else condition and I'll uh, uh, tell you what you, uh, what you put inside that condition. But as of now, we're not gonna have like that check winner uh, function I was talking about earlier. We'll actually program that in the next video. But for now, we'll just have, you know, the changing of turns so that we can see that the player actually, you know, makes his move and then the turn switches to the next player. So what I'll have is a simple if, uh, if else condition and I'm going to say if turn is going to be equals to, and I apologize for the lag, it's uh, my computer is a bit slow. So I'm gonna say if turn is equals to um, P, well in this case it's going to um, uh, basically just uh, set the turn to be um, Q. So I'm just going to say set turn to Q and uh, uh, after we set a uh, turn to be, wait, wait a second. So after we set turn to be, uh, and I actually got confused, I was looking for Q there. So after we set turn to be Q, um, that's pretty much it. Uh, we will now be setting the turn to be P in case the turn was Q. So uh, I'm just going to duplicate that and set it to P. And right after this, now keep in mind, we haven't, you know, changed the movement variable if the player made a legitimate move. So I'm going to set movement to be yes. And uh, after this, we're going to allow the player to be moving. So set movement to yes. Now when we just hit the green flag and run our code, now you can see when we press the space bar, it takes a while, but you can see that the coin actually drops and goes to the correct position. And now we can actually move the second player. Once again, when we hit the space bar, nothing happens because we haven't programmed all of the red button code inside the green button. So what we'll do now is to just uh, throw in all this code into the green button. And uh, we'll have to do a bit of changes because of the turn, but things are going to be pretty simple. Now head over to your green button. I'm gonna clean up everything. And you wanna scroll down or scroll up, depending on where your code cleaned up, to where you had like uh, this block of code which said when I receive move player. And you wanna change this turn to be Q, okay? Once you're done with that, that's pretty much it. That's all you're gonna have. And now when we hit the green flag once again, and now uh, when we hit the space bar, you can see that this moved to the wrong coordinate. And that sometimes happens when you hit the green flag after you make a change in code. So just uh, like have the green flag pressed once again and things should be working fine for you. Now, if we actually try moving the green key, you can see everything works just as fine. And now we can slow it or fasten it depending on what your uh, glide or uh, 0.5 or 0.6 or 0.7 seconds, whatever your time value actually is. And that is going to ensure that your coins move faster or slower. And that pretty much sums up everything that we'll be coding in this video. If you've enjoyed this video, please make sure you leave a like and also don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.